Welcome all of you to the webinar, Youth Mental Health in School and Nordic Perspective. My name is Doug and I work in the National Board of Social Services, which is part of the Ministry of Social Affairs and Senior Citizens in Denmark. In today's webinar, we welcome researchers from Norway and Iceland with knowledge about youth mental health in schools. Within the last decade, there has been a <clears throat> decrease in the mental well-being among youth throughout the Nordic region. This was the reason when Denmark initiated the Nordic Network for Youth Mental Distress when they held the presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers two years ago. I will present the project I have been a part of and the overall findings from this project. The papers from this project are available online for those of you who are interested in the finer details. First, some practical information. This is the webinar you cannot see, where you cannot see the other people attending the webinar. If you have any questions, I invite you to use the form on the web webinar page. Please state your name and if you do not mind, your organization. And the speakers will answer your questions after your presentation. Mental health issues in schools is a topic originating from the work in the network and the network's proposals for a future Nordic research project. We have therefore invited three speakers with new research and knowledge within youth mental health in schools to present their work. We first welcome Sidi Hausland Olsta and Maud Edvold from the University of Oslo in Norway. They will present the interdisciplinary topic health and life skills, which was implemented in all Norwegian schools in 2020. Afterwards, we will meet Sigrun Danielsdottir, a psychologist from Iceland, who has also been part of our Nordic network. She will give an overview of the Icelandic work on mental health, promotion, prevention and support for children and youth in Icelandic schools. A warm thank you to Siri, Maud and Sigrun for accepting to share their knowledge today. Two years ago, a Nordic network with representatives from most national boards of social services and health services in the Nordic region was established. Denmark initiated the project when they had the presidency of the Nordic Council of Ministers in 2020. The purpose with the network was, among other things, to engage Nordic young women and men in communities with a focus on democratic citizenship and improving psychological well-being. Furthermore, strengthen the knowledge and skills of the professionals who are in contact with young people and to create spaces both inside and outside the school system that contribute to promoting system sustainable communities among young people. Moreover, the purpose was also to strengthen the communities across the Nordic countries and the cooperation across the health and social field. Our tasks the last two years have been to map out and describe relevant research-based knowledge across the Nordic region on the causes of the increase in mental stress among youth aged 13 to 25 years, including knowledge about the different risk and protective factors for mental distress. In addition, we have described the cross-sectoral collaboration between social and health sector sectors in the Nordic countries in relation to youth regarding <clears throat> mental distress. We have also mapped out national examples of practices within coherent cross-sectoral interventions towards youth to express mental distress. Finally, we have prepared a closing report summarizing the main results from our project containing the discoveries of the causes and practical examples. The final report also describes the network's recommendations for four possible joint Nordic research projects that can shed future light on the causes of mental distress and effective further steps to fight the increase of mental distress. 
the target group for this project is young people aged 13 to 25 who either show signs of mental distress, are in mental distress, or show signs of mental disorders. Youth with mental illnesses receiving psychiatric treatment was not a focus. The light yellow box in this model illustrates the target group. In the following, I want to highlight some associative factors to youth mental distress from the work in the network. The factors were found in a Nordic literature search looking into peer-reviewed research published in English. For methods, please see the publication online. The focus for our search was causes for the increase in mental distress among youth. We did not find direct causes. We found associative factors and especially risk factors. In addition, we found a knowledge gap in protective factors. I want to highlight three areas of knowledge from our finding. It's a small contribution to the excessive pool of knowledge, for instance, in local languages throughout the Nordic country. <clears throat> the first factor is psychosocial problems. The identified studies look at different psychosocial problems such as loneliness, negative life events, sexual abuse, as well as sexual orientation and transgenderism. There is a risk of a psychiatric diagnosis among children in care and the research find a correlation between parents' life satisfaction and their children's life satisfaction. The studies that have been examined, the studies that have examined loneliness and negative life events in the context of mental well-being show that the adolescent phase is particularly vulnerable. The young people who find themselves in the stage between youth and adulthood are particularly vulnerable to divorce, domestic violence, rejection by friends, and serious illness. Factors that can all affect the young people's mental well being. Several of the studies, therefore, point to the importance of parental support during this period of young lives, young people's lives, as being a protective factor. This applies to all young people, but studies point to LGBT young people in particular. The second factor is use of digital media. The development of digital technology has affected young people's access to information and social interaction. The studies included in the report look at young people's use of social media, gaming patterns and behavior, cyberbullying and exposure to online information, all of which are considered associating factors for psychological distress. The results indicate that young people Online gaming can explain a number of psychological, social, and physical symptoms of unhappiness. Gaming behavior can also negatively affect young people's sleep, which can lead to depressive symptoms. Several studies show a connection between cyberbullying, harassment, use of social media, and young people's mental well being. One of the studies shows that the frequency of reported cyberbullying is higher among girls than among boys. Furthermore, it can be seen from the reports that the abundance of information online can reduce young people's self-confidence, adaptability, and their decision-making process in relation to, for example, the choice of education. The last factor we are presenting today is related to school and education. Several of the studies show a connection between the educational environment and the young people's well-being. Here we are talking about the psychosocial environment in school, the academic skills of the young people, and the importance of budget costs in the school arena. A good social environment can have a positive influence on young people's mental well-being and vice versa. While other studies highlight grades, academic performance and motivation in school, a 
as being linked to the young people's mental well-being. The task for the network was also to look into examples of where the healthcare sector and the social sector collaborate in relation to mental distress among youth people. The interventions are all grounded in the public sector, meaning that either a municipality, a region, or the state runs the interventions and models that are shown. On this slide, we show seven practice examples of cross-sectoral interventions identified across the Nordic countries. An intervention is defined as an action that is concentrated and aimed at a result. The identified interventions aim to prevent mental illness or promote mental health through organized interventions, both locally and nationally. Do remember that these are only examples and not a complete list. This slide shows you 10 examples of cross-sectoral national strategies or collaboration models crossing social services and healthcare sectors. As you can see from the matrix, we have divided the examples according to whether they are a collaboration model or a strategy, and whether they are primarily anchored in the healthcare sector or the social services sector. More in-depth descriptions can be found in the paper <coughs> at norden.org. In the last paper from the network, we have identified four proposals for a future research project. They are listed here and they are all based on the research identified in our first paper from 2021. You will be able to read more about the four proposals in our third paper that will be published in February 2023. Today we shed light on proposal two, which is interventions to promote mental health in schools. So that was a brief look at our work in the Nordic Network.